Gonna profit now. Gonna, gonna profit now by Jack Sanderellia. Jack, Jack Sanderellia. Gonna profit now. Gonna, gonna profit now. Profit Jack Sanderellia. Sanderellia. T Force. Welcome to the rework of the T Force. Now we going hard because we bumping at the beat source. It's a three course dinner of dudes bringing the news and stats, interviews and cast from the pro scene. So fresh and so clean, like you're leaning with. I'm in the bot lane. Keep it hot like brand. Practicing his dot game. Give it to you easy like you're Resi in the bot. Game. Imagine Draven at prime time. Now ulti like LeBlanc can copy that four times. But manlier, knock it up like now fight planning a family. -er. You gotta be tuned in like Sona on the ad wall. Get on the chat call. Can a podcast really be all that? Of course. How do four guys pick a try for? Hey guys, welcome to Trinity Force Podcast. My name is Adam Ponophobia Cogswell. And as always, I am your host for this lovely evening. As you can see, we have a new person sitting on the cast. And we've all talked about him for weeks to come. Red Mercy from, well, I'd say from YouTube is where a lot of people know you from has joined us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited Thank you. to be here. Yes, I, thanks for joining us. We are very excited to start talking to you about mid lane uh, for a quick moment. Days, Chira, and Punch are here for the people who listen to the MP3, so they know who else is joining us. <laughs> hey. Uh, hey, guys. I, I have asked Punch to compile as many questions as he possibly can to talk your ear off. But before we get to that point, <laughs> uh, Red, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell us, tell us who you are. People might not know you. <laughs> anything and everything about you, uh, and also what your favorite color is color. Okay, I'll start with that one first. Um, usually it's green because my dad's favorite <laughs> color was green and it's the color of money. Money's good. I like that. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. The color red is definitely kind of you know going up there because of my name. Um, but all that aside, so my name is Dimitri Granin or Red Mercy on YouTube or the internet I guess. And um, So people usually know me from YouTube. That's where I kind of started my thing. That was about I don't know, about three and a half years ago, I would say I started this channel. Um, and I started with StarCraft first, and I was trying to do like kind of random commentaries about like Pokemon and stuff, just me playing through. And, uh, <laughs> and then eventually, I'm just like, mainly for the StarCraft part, I'm just like, well, I'm pretty bad at this game. Why not make videos about a game I'm actually like pretty good at, not a game I'm horrible at? So I started making ones for League of Legends, and I'm like, you know, promoting it everywhere I possibly can. And, uh, you know, after time went by, a lot of struggles, you know, I slowly grew up. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. So that's kind of that. Um, my channel is mainly focused on educational content. So uh, mainly for the mid lane, I like to make like top five lists for like the top five assassins or APs. Um, I have a series called League of Myths where I kind of test things. So like, um, for instance, if you don't know, you know, Vagar stun, if you actually use it on someone and they're in the center of the stun, but they don't actually get stunned and you never actually auto attack them or you never use an ability on them. And then let's say that guy goes and dies to tower you'll still get the kill or assist or something like that, even though you never actually directly interacted with them. So that's like, you know, small things like that. Or like what happens if two veins auto attack the same target, like a, like the blue buff, let's say. Two, two veins on enemy teams with her W, you know, the ring. It's, it's really weird visual bugs. Like it just stays at two rings, even though they keep switching auto attacks and just, you know, cool things like that. Um, I have a Did you know series where I go over like lore and cool facts about champions and overall just... Every now and then I do like funny videos, like stream highlights and yeah, stuff like that. Interacting with people streaming. I know you were streaming quite a bit today. You said you just got done with what, an eight hour session? Oh, it wasn't eight hours. I don't know what time is it right now, actually. Or was it only a four hour session? It I was guess only like awesome. five hours, four or okay. five hours. Yeah. But I did a nine hour session last week. That was exhausting. I don't know. People think like <laughs> sitting there streaming, just like playing a game is like, oh, how hard could it be? But it's, it's more exhausting than it looks because you have to interact with like, you know, the chats. Right. Um, if you ever have a bad game, you're just sitting here like shit, like, you know. <laughs> like it, 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 feel, it feels awkward, right? You know, everyone's like staring at you, like judging every little move you do. And, but yeah. And then you got those people that are like, you know, calling you bad because you died once or twice. Yeah, you died once or like... twice. Oh my God. <laughs> I, you don't even want to look at the chat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I know I, I went over your channel and I looked at some of the stuff today. We're gonna, I do want to talk to you about your top five list. You just released a, release, a video this last week about your top five assassins for the mid lane. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna also going to talk about roaming. Warding your, as your job in the mid lane, how you should ward, what your job is during team fights, and your job as a mage, as an assassin during those pieces, and also post DFG removal. Those are like the five main topics going to hit, and we're <laughs> going to kind of go from there. So, um, I think the biggest thing I want to hit on and start here from the beginning is the post DFG removal. Now that that item is gone and you've played a lot of mid lane, can you just give your thoughts on that? And you know, we'll expand after that point. Um, I honestly, I feel like even though I play assassins, for instance, like LeBlanc and maybe Ari. Fizz, um, Akali, Katarina, all champions that really benefited off of uh, DFG. I'm actually happy because 
if I were to face them, I would, it, there really is very little counterplay to it. Um, so like you're facing a Katarina and she DFGs you, ease you, ults, and you're dead like in a second. Um, especially if she's ahead, that's even like less than that. Um, so the fact that they removed it, I like it because it just offers more skill now, I feel like, you know, rather than just maybe luckily getting fed or something and get that one item and now chances are you're going to kill anyone you want and, and there's very little they can do about it. Um, so in that sense, I like it because there's just more things you could do now. There's more options. There's more like, like Riot stated, there's more counterplay. There's more things you can do. So, um, as an assassin though, like for me having that item, I mean, yeah, it felt nice. Yeah, it felt like, oh man, I'm ahead. I can just, you know, go and kill anyone I want. But at the same time, it was kind of boring. Like it didn't really feel like I'm really, I guess, I don't know. You know, like the saying, that's like, oh, like the more you work for something and then when you finally accomplish it, the better it feels rather than just kind of give it uh, being handed on a silver platter. Right. Like it's that kind of feeling. Like you feel like you deserve that kill more. You feel like you deserve to win more rather than just pressing two buttons and, oh, look at that. You know, I killed someone. Well, we had We've already... no, go ahead, Munch. Go, go. So I wanted to ask a question um, specifically about the champions that used to build DFG. And we've already seen Ari. She seems to be the first one that got changed due to the removal. Um, significant buffs. After that, yeah, yeah, but she seemed to be the only one. Uh, what what champions? Well. What was that? Fizz got changed because he gained the twenty percent. Fizz did get changed, but it seemed like an overall nerf. It was, a nerf. There, was there was conflicting thoughts about whether Fizz is still viable. But what what champions do you expect to still get changed after this DFG removal? In, in one of your videos, you you said that LeBlanc is someone that that relied on DFG. Yeah, are you still expecting a, a change for her, for example, or is there anyone else? Well, that's, that's a little question, weaker now than they should be. I feel like uh, LeBlanc, I feel like, is in a good position. I don't know if she needs to get changed. I feel like what she is now is she's not overpowered, but she's not weak. I think she's in the... Maybe, if, if anything, she's slightly overpowered. She might get a small nerf to just maybe a damage output, like on her W. Because everyone maxes W right now, like, yep. uh, first. Um, because because the biggest thing she has is wave clear, right? I mean, she can't wave clear, so that's why they max W. If you max Q first, you're going to have issues with CS. Um, and on top of that, the harass with W is just, it's nice. You can go in, go out, and the cooldown goes down as well, and that's being her you know, primary, like, kind of uh, juking ability and dodging ability. You want to get that down as fast as possible, much like Fizz's E. Um, so I, I feel like, if anything, LeBlanc might get nerfed a tad, but I don't think she should, like, not to the uh, extent that, like, a Fizz change happened or, like, a um, Ari change happened. I'm actually surprised they changed them that much, and only them, and then they left out, like, you know, maybe LeBlanc, or they left out Vagar, um, they left right. out Katarina. Well, Katarina already got nerfed a few patches ago. Maybe they don't need to touch her, I don't know. But yeah, I'm surprised they didn't touch Vagar. That's the main one I, I want to talk about. So Vagar is a champion that's really strong in solo queue, I think, because he, he what's the word? He punishes people for mistakes very easily because of his stun. It's the, it, the range is huge. It's, it's, the stun itself is like very wide. Or like, I don't know, what's, what's the word? Circumference or something? Um, <laughs> radius? The radius, there you go. Radius, and then, diameter, throw in all the... Throw in all uh, radius, diameter, all circumference. The <laughs> one, of them is, one of them is the right one, yeah. yeah. But like, <laughs> it's, it's really good at catching people off, right? And then a lot of people, they don't realize that if you don't get Merc Boots or if you don't get Tenacity, um, you're going to be in that stun for a long time. And it's enough time for the W to come, uh, to come down, especially if the Vagar is maxing it first. Um, one thing you have to get against them is going to be tenacity to kind of get out of that stun before the meteor comes down and like just wrecks you. Um, so, with that being said, since Vagar heavily relies on like his stun, then his Q alt or alt Q or whatever, half of his damage can be negated just with the banshees if you do it correctly. Right? It's possible because if you're if you play it smart, you avoid his stun. Then he has no other option than to just to fire his abilities at you. But then you have your banshees and you're going to dodge like a lot of the damage. So that's why he really relied on DFG sometimes because he didn't really have any other sources. He just had those two abilities. If they don't kill you, then well, it's it. You're 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 free to go. You can just walk away. Um, I so think you make a good point about Vagar to keep to keep going on this topic though, because uh, yeah. if I remember correctly, a lot of people are are maxing Q on Vagar for the harass and lane instead of using it to pick up the extra AP. And he can actually be a giant lane bully as long as he has his void gate up, not void gate, as long as he has his his circle stun up, and and. I'm really surprised that we don't see more Vagars, and I think there's a lot of the apprehension for playing him because people feel like there's too big of a skill gap. But even as you said, just having that ability up and always use is kind of like the TF in the mid lane, having a you know a card flipping across right. your head it yeah. is something that forces people to play differently because yeah. of the threat of what could happen. Exactly, like it, his stun is, I think, one of the best spells in solo queue to just. 
because solo queue, no one's coordinated, right? Chances are. So, I mean, it's just perfect for that. Um, but yeah, going back on that, I feel like he should be someone that Riot should look at. I feel like, um, I don't know what they did with Fizz. That was just, that was, that was kind of rude. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone, man. Like, AP Fizz, like, rip. That's all I have to say. Like, he's gone. They're actually I playing AD Fizz now. Yeah, I heard you mention that in a video, but I, I never heard of it before. Could you explain what that is? I brought it up the same damn day the patch hit. I was like, we're going to see AD Fizz now. This because he was already being played in the yeah, top. Yeah, but I don't lane. listen to you. <laughs> okay, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> okay, in all honesty, actually, as I was making my top five, like, as I was recording the champions and I was, as I was playing them, um, I had never heard of AD Fizz either until people started telling me, like some of my friends, you know, my high level friends are like, yo man, AD Fizz, yo, it's the shit. And I'm like, what? <laughs> How is that even possible, right? I looked at his ratios on Wiki and I'm like, his only uh, ability that scales off of it is his Q, which, you know, be it does scale to a one-to-one -one ratio and uh, 1.2 if you have your ultimate on them because of the 20% increase. But like, I've, I'm like, there's no way this works. And then I went to the pro builds, I looked at uh, Fizz and I see like Void Boy, I see a lot of people like building like, what is it, Bork? Mm -hmm. Triforce, um, I forgot the other items, but just that kind of, you know, kind of an assassin needs sort of like, almost oh, like you would build Zed or Yasuo yeah, or right. something. And yeah, I don't know, I've seen them, I watched um, another Fizz streamer, Fate Falls, play it a bit. It doesn't look that, I don't, I, I'm not convinced personally. I, it doesn't feel like Fizz to me. It doesn't <laughs> seem like it's that OP, but I've never faced one and I never played it, so I can't say for sure in all honesty. It's still something quite new, but. I don't know. People are saying it's OP. People are saying it's really strong right now. I'm just, I'm not, I'm personally not convinced yet until maybe I get wrecked by one or until I start wrecking one. I think a lot of that has to it. go with, uh, people forget that Fizz is passive as a, you know, permanent ghost. You're allowed to walk through creeps the entire time. And so being able to harass anybody at any point in time and make it back to your creeps with the, what is it, percentage of, uh, it's not missing life, it's percentage, yeah, it's That's percentage missing of life. missing yeah, it's life, percentage right? It's percentage missing life now. Right. Uh, building a Blade of the Ruin King on top of that, you're, you're, you're chunking. You're chunking top laners, people who are building a lot of a lot of health. Yeah, you got a lot of percent damage going. But the only problem with that now is since the nerf, they actually changed the percentage damage off of his passive W to his active now. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't really get her off as much. I'm not sure how much CDR is in that AD Fizz build. So I need to look at the numbers. I can't remember off the top of my head what the cooldown on W is. But I'm sure you need some CDR in order to be able to have the W on permanently. I'm sure right. you can have it on permanently, right? So I still don't see the damage being too crazy. But... I don't know. It's just something I honestly have to, again, try or just get wrecked by and then to see its like, potential. So part of the patch 5.2 changes was to a buff to Hextech Gunblade. They added extra, they added AP onto it, removed a little AD, uh, nerfed some of the, the life steal on the item. But obviously, the, you know, they, they front loaded the AP on that item. And part of your top five list had Katarina Akali. and Akali on it. Um, are you building that item on them more frequently or were you still building it before and now it's just more powerful on these, these assassins? I haven't really tr had too much uh, time to really try with it. I've never, I mean, on Katarina, you almost never see it anymore. Um, because I can't remember the exact, again, the numbers, but they changed Katarina a while ago, I think. I think her AD ratios aren't as good anymore. I can't remember. I might be wrong. They, but you they, never see. They took them back a little bit to uh, when they did her <laughs> little Excuse me. overhaul. Took it back to what? The, they, I just, I know they removed the, the AD ratio a significant yeah. amount from what it was. Exactly. Which is why you stop seeing Gunblade on yeah. Katarina. You still see it on Kali though, because Kali her passive benefits off AD and AP, which is you know you want that going. Um, her E, which I mean I think is a horrible spell now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, to give you that, that benefit, Katarina has a uh, 0.6 AD ratio on her Sinister Steel, which is W, and has a 37.5 percent bonus AD on her Death Lotus, so 0.375. Point three seven five. Right. You see, it's not nothing too crazy. Well, when maybe you, when now you compare that, gone. and it's three hundred seventy five percent bonus AD. So it actually has a really good AD bonuses on W and R uh, compared to her AP. But Shun Po and Bouncing Blade only scale off AP with Katarina. All right, let me look at this page too quickly. Yeah, yeah, it's easier when you look at it yourself too. But six um, percent on her thing, thirty seven and a half to a maximum of three seventy five percent. So it's more than the uh, AP it looks like on her ultimate right. and her thing. But then her Q and E, nothing. Eh, I don't know. Honestly, I, you just never see it on her. I think the reason you don't see it on her much is because, well, before you had DFG. Now that you don't have DFG, maybe you'll see it more. But how, how much AP does Gunblade give now? Like, how much is it off now? I'm not it's even 80. 80? Yeah. It yeah, I went from 65 yeah. to 80. And how much AD does it offer? 40. Uh, 40. Hmm. Maybe it's not too bad. I, like, the only thing I don't like is I just, the Vampiric Scepter effect from Cutlass. 
with Katarina, you're not really doing anything with that. Um, so the lifesteal is kind of useless. It's kind of a wasted stat. While on, on Akali, it's not, right? Akali, you're using literally every single portion of gu uh, Gunblade, and it helps you stick on your target more, because Katarina's kind of go in, burst them in a second, and then probably reset and keep going, while uh, right. Akali is like, I have to keep like going on you, and like, keep like, jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping. So this helps you kind of stick on that target a lot easier, which is why I feel like Rylize is not too bad on Akali either. Um, I mean, you used to see a lot of Gunblade on Katarina, like several patches ago, but you stopped seeing it probably because DFG is just better. But now that it's gone, maybe you'll start seeing Gunblade more often. I don't know. It's it, it's it's gonna take more time to really kind of have all this kind of you know just sink in and have everything go back to like a certain meta or something like that. Well, part of you know again we'll talk about this video since we're talking about your top five assassins. We'll go through it again. Number five was Akali. We'll go up from there. Five Akali, four Cassidy, three Katarina, two Zed, one Yasuo, and. Yeah. Um, I look at Yasuo and see him a very high skill cap champion. Can you give us a little an, an insider peek at what that video is about for people who haven't watched it? What video is it about? It, it, well, what you say in the video. Because, you know, you spent oh, well, about Yasuo? Months, so, yeah, about Yasuo. Sorry. Um, okay, so I like how you said he's a high skill cap champion. I, I can't stand people that say he's easy to play. Um, I on it, it makes me want to like shoot a kitten or something Who's oh he's so that? hard <laughs> yeah he's i, I, I really played him two hard games game. he's super hard <laughs> same with ribbon people say ribbon's a skull you, you know, who says right? ribbon's like she's a hard champion you gotta have, really hard champion. you have to have a little latency to play ribbon well like, we, yeah we sit here and just yell about this but go ahead sorry <laughs> yeah i'm sorry that just it just really frustrates me when people, when people say that yasuo ribbon are hard champions but back on yasuo i put him number one it's kind of like it's kind of a personal pick i would say much like how i put tf in my top five list as number five I I I I'm really feeling Yasuo right now. I'm just enjoying him a lot. I'm, I'm usually having good success with him, and um, I mean he got indirectly nerfed. Uh, what is it? Two patches ago, I think, or was it? Pretty sure it was two patches ago with the IE. It went from twenty-five to twenty percent. That was uh, mm -hmm. patch five-one, right? Five-one. Yes, yeah, so the two patches. Yeah, well, not this patch. The one before that. Right, right. And they um, changed Q on him. That same patch. If was I that that patch? Well, I think that was a patch before that or something. Four-two-one was that? Okay. Either way, though, yeah. So the change to his Q was good. Um, the reason it's good is because now his Q is a static cooldown and it's fixed no matter what rank the Q is. So now the only way you reduce the Q cooldown is with attack speed. Uh, the reason that's good, and I explained this in one of my videos when he actually just the, for the change first got released, is because you can now put points into your E to like maybe three or four before you put more than one point in your Q. The reason I like that, it's a little risky because that means you're going to be playing very aggressive in the laning phase. But... What do you get? Like, like, if you just think about it, what do you get from maxing your Q right now in Yasuo? You get 20 bonus flat damage on the ability, but what do you get from maxing your E? You also get 20 bonus flat damage, but you also get the CDR on the E, and you get the CDR on the target that you use it on, so you can use it on that same target sooner. So you just get more off of it, which is why I like to do that. I like to max that to maybe three or four in the laning phase, abuse it just, you know, everywhere, and um, just make it really annoying for the champion to kind of deal with me. Um, and then talking about his uh, indirect nerfs with the IE. So this very common build was Static Shift into Infinity Edge. And the reason that's common is because if you run 5% crit chance in your runes, you have 100% crit chance with Yasuo. Which, I mean, you know, that's, that's awesome, right? How would you not want to have 100% crit <laughs> chance? Um, and then, so this obviously made it so that, you know, you have uh, effectively 10% less crit chance than Yasuo when taking into account his passive. Um, so now what you can do, what I do, is uh, I actually have 10% crit chance in my runes. And I just uh, go ahead and I still get that 100% crit chance. How do, you, how, do you, or how do you use your runes for that 10% crit chance? Like, what, what runes are you running right now on, on like it's, Yeah, pull it's them up. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> um, okay, so all my red ones are crits. All red runes are crits. I have, for yellow runes, I have a mix of, holy shit, okay, hold on. I have two fl or four flat HP yellows. I have two crits on yellows. And the rest are armor. I have uh, three crit chance on blues. Um, I have four, no, five flat MR blues and one MR per level blue. And then my quints are two life steals and one attack damage uh, quints. And that gives me exactly 10% crit chance. I need, um, I need to put this page together. I've played yet. I've been trying to learn <laughs> Yasuo and I'm terrible at him, but uh, like I figure it's like if I can keep throwing myself at it, it'll make it the happen. The best part is he doesn't know what he can and can't block with Windwall, so every time something goes through Windwall, he just starts screaming <laughs> that it's... Like Zareth that, Q, and I'm that, sure you... That, that whoever he's playing against is so overpowered because no, no, it gets no, through no, Windwall. No. 
<laughs> that was just that was the one day that the Zareth Q. But uh, so I, I we're gonna we'll have to post a link to your rune page or at least put that together so people can see. Do you have more than one rune page on Yasuo? Yasuo, because I've seen some yeah. people run uh, attack speed and and not. Yeah, the yeah, that's my second page actually. The second page. So I'm actually making a video on this for next week. There's right now I think three builds for Yasuo. I'm not gonna, you know say anything yet but sure um the but uh, the titles of the bills is assassin yasuo which uses this room page i just uh mentioned which is pretty much just getting 100 percent crit chance with ie static shift and just going full damage um you have a, a dueler yasuo and i'm gonna have a brawler yasuo so the dueler one is gonna be one that's you know like a, a good split pushing one a good 1v1 and then brawler is gonna be a really kind of um almost like a top laner kind of build where you're just kind of still dealing the damage, but you're a lot more tanky and you kind of want to be in the middle of the fight more rather than just kind of go in, do your damage, get out as like you know, an assassin Yasuo. So the second rune page I have is going to be towards the other two builds, while the first Yasuo rune page I have, which is the one I just mentioned, is for the assassin one for the 100% crit chance. Um, so for instance, the second rune page I have, I only have one crit chance, which is in the, in the reds, I believe, and the rest are like attack speed. I have attack speed... Um, Something else, I think. I'll just have attack speed reds. Then I have lifesteal uh, quints again with uh, attack damage, etc., etc. But I do have two pages. I've never honestly used the second one too much. I've always been more of the assassin Yasuo. I just like the 100% crit chance. I love like just critting everywhere. Right. Um, especially with the static ship because the lightning crits, uh, crits as well, right? So um, I don't know. That's what I like, but. I want to make a video about it. I want to talk about it. I want to give the items. Oh, no, you, you're fine. We don't. We, we're not here to try to take away from your content. Definitely oh, give cool. some cool. people well, some like some uh, you know something to look forward to because we want more people to check out your channel. That's why we you know we pulled you on here. Uh, right. You're obviously the Zed master. We a lot of people code to you to learn how to play Zed. Uh, can you tell? Can you give us an idea of from the if you remember from the first time you picked up Zed to how you play Zed now the steps that you would go through to learning and mastering a champion? You could talk about Yasuo or any of the other champions as well. But uh, the reason I'm focusing on Zed is because you're so good at him. Um, okay, well, in all honesty, there are better Zeds than me. <laughs> I'm not the best Zed in NA by any by any means. Sure. There's a lot better Zeds than me for sure. But you're right. Most people do go for, go to me for Zed. That's like my most popular champion. Um, so he's a very hard champion. He's not easy at all. Uh, and the steps you want to go through, well, it, it depends on the champion. But in this case, for Zed, um, I need to think about this a bit because oh, I play him so I, much. I know that one's a harder one that I sprung on you here. Yeah, because I play him so much that, like, to me, I don't even think about it anymore. In all, in all honesty, um, the first thing, well, the, the the number one tip I say, I think, for Zed is control your shadows, right? His shadows, that's literally what defines Zed, his shadows. How well you can manage them, how well you can place them, how well you can remember where they are. For instance, um, one cool thing you can do with him, which I mentioned in one of my videos a while ago, if I can remember 100%, was um, you can always, you always want to like lead them away from your shadow. Like if you're trying to make an escape, if you're trying to like kind of, you know, juke them out and stuff, um, you want to like alt them, and then W away from where your ultimate shadow is. And then you know you, you run that way and you like go and maybe they'll say into a brush and they don't say they don't have vision of that brush. The second you walk in, you press R and you go back to the other shadow. And then if they don't have vision of that shadow anymore, they have no idea where you are. Are you still in that brush or did you go back? Things like that. And so if you get them away from that shadow, then chances are you can just press R since there's no range on your ultimate shadow, like in terms of going back to it. So you can just go back and a lot of people get juked by it, unless you're playing like in high ELO, where they usually have like if you're getting ganked. The mid laner will chase you while the jungler will go and wait at that shadow. So you have no options. Like, do you keep running or do you go back? Either way, there's someone waiting for you. Mm -hmm. um, that's what, that's when it becomes a little more complicated. Or like another trick with Zed, which is pretty complicated, but like one thing you can do to like kill someone, and this is going like all out for the kill, is um, right before your ultimate. So let's say like you're standing here and like your target's like here, right? Like your mid lane, or whatever, right? So you put your W on top of the target and then you ult them. So then you have one W on top of them and you have one. Uh, one shadow on top of him, and you have one shadow pretty much from where you were. And that's one, that one's from your ultimate. So then you can, and if you have flash up, what you can do, and this is usually what you do when you're like really low and you're trying to kill someone that has like a lot of HP, you flash to the opposite side. So now you have your here, your first shadow is here from W, and then your ultimate shadow is all the way back here. So you throw the Q, and all three Qs hit him. Hmm. Uh, you want to use your E, obviously, um, for the slow and whatnot. And then what you can always do, especially if they have skill shots, is you have options now, right? So let's say you're facing an Annie or Cassiopeia or something. You can go back to either this shadow or that shadow, and then it's really hard for them to predict like where you're gonna go. And chances are, you know, they'll miss their skill shots, like a one in three chance almost, right? That's another really cool tip you can do. Um, I had another one that I just completely forgot about it though. Um, ah, I forgot. Oh my god, I was just thinking about it, and it just escaped me. 
But again, like the number one thing is to maintain your shadows. Um, his best, like he's really strong in the laning phase and he's really strong in mid game. His late game, I think personally, it falls off because there's like, there's so many counters. You have QSS, you have Zonis, you have Kelt, you have Lissandro, you have just a lot of things. Um, so you want to make sure that you get, you really understand his um, early to mid game. You want to make sure you, I guess, you snowball as hard as you can. You take advantage of his power there. And then the thing that really separates really good Zets from like, I don't know, mediocre Zeds is how you transition into that late game. Because like I said, that's, in my opinion, the hardest part in terms of kind of knowing what to do. Like, do you still push? Do you team fight? How do you team fight? Because they have so many counters. How do you not get CC'd? Like, what do you do exactly? When do you go in? When do you not go in, right? All these things with any assassin, really, but especially Zed, because he's so hard to play on top of having a ridiculous amount of counters, so his ultimate. Um, it all comes from experience. People always ask me, oh, how do I get better? How do I get as good as you? How, how this, how that? It, this League of Legends is a game that comes from experience. No one's going to sit down and never play a MOBA in their life and just suddenly like go play Zed and beat Faker or something, you know? Like, that doesn't happen, right? It comes from experience. That's why pro players play for, like, what, 18 hours in Korea, for instance. They play, like, 18 hours or 16 hours a day. Mm -hmm. It's experience. You play, the more you play, the more you learn, the more you, you kind of adapt, the more it becomes, like, muscle memory to you, and you, you can just do things. So, again, with Zed, you want to ma maintain those shadows. You want to make sure you know how to do the laning phase properly because he has one of the best laning phases of Assassins because he has uh, good poke, he has good escapes, and... Um, I don't know. It just—it really is experience. You just got to play him. You get—you got to make a lot of mistakes, but you should learn from those mistakes. Now you touched on something there that I had a particular question on, and that was the the five v five team fighting with an assassin in the mid to late game. Um, specifically, how do you look to engage those team fights? How do, how do you enter them? Because you know assassins—they're not like melee bruisers. They can't just <laughs> mindlessly dive the back line. Run in there. <laughs> now. Yeah. I mean, maybe they can if there's good enough initiation, or if they snowball hard enough. But most of the time, they need to be more they need to be more subtle, so they don't attract a lot of focus. Yeah. So, so what are you looking for when you're looking to start a team fight or or engage into a team fight? Are you are you waiting for that initiation? Are you looking for a specific mistake? Or, oh, yeah, or okay. is it just is it just better sometimes to um, go back into the jungle and wait for a pick or or counter push? Yeah. Again, like, like you said, you gave me a lot of options, right? And the mm -hmm. reason you gave me a lot of options is because it's situational. Because right? it all depends. It's on very the situation. situational. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we can go over some, for instance. Like, let's say, um, okay, well, one is, of course, getting a pick. Let's say, like, the ADC is a little too far out. Bam, just W ult him, do your damage really fast. Like, one tip I actually have is called quick fingers, where you want to do, so pretty much how you want to do it. Let's say the ADC goes too far, you WQ, or you W ult him, you charge at him. So, you want to, the second you appear, you want to E, you want to auto attack Q, or Q auto attack, which doesn't really matter too much. You want to Bork. Um, if you have Yomas, you want to pop Yomas as you're Wing. Um, if you have a Hydra, you want to obviously auto attack Hydra. And you want to do all of that, like your full combo, full everything in like a second. You want to do that in one second, and you want to press R and get the hell out of there, right? That's your job. Because if you stay too long, I mean, his team will react. They'll CC you down, you'll die, and if you don't even get the kill, that's, you know, that's, that's horrible. That's just a loss. So that's one obvious, that's one obviously uh, uh, option, rather. Um, Another one is if a team fight actually erupts and it's just like a really a really standard fight where it's just oh these five are chasing into these five and just like boom a clash of champions. It's you want to always keep your eyes on the back line. You want to lo always look at their AP mid, for instance, or their ADC or whoever the squishy targets are. They're kind of chilling in the back. You always want to look at them. You want to see what they're doing. You want to wait for them. For instance, let's say Graves. You want to maybe wait for him to use his E offensively or something to try and go in the fight, see the opportunity, and then just W ult him or something with Z or. Um, with uh, Talon, for instance, what I like to do is, let's say, you want to kind of chill somewhere away from the fight where maybe they don't see you. And one thing with Talon you can do is you can ult away from the fight so they won't even see you. Let's say you even use your ultimate. You can charge in. While you're charging, you can pop your moves and it won't, it won't cancel your stealth, right? You just keep running even faster. Then you just E auto attack QW, Hydra, if you have Hydra. And um, that'll burst down your target. And you do it from like the back line or something, or like from the side. Like the fight's like in the mid middle of here. Like your team's here, their team is here. You go from like the side here or something. You know what I mean? It, with assassins, you usually want to wait. You you want to wait for like a big skill to be blown by the enemy team, like a big CC ability, maybe like a Lissandra ultimate or something. You want to try to wait for that if you can, especially like a Katarina too, right? Especially Katarina. You want to wait. You want to maybe get wait for them to be a half HP, all the big skills to be uh, popped, all the skills that can stop you from resetting. And when that's all popped, you want to dive in there. You want to try and clean up. Because assassins, you know, they're good at cleaning up abilities. Oh, abilities. Uh, champions. Um, so that's the main thing I would say in like a regular team fight. You want to just... Wait, you want to be patient. It's I know it's really hard 
a lot of people want to just mindlessly dive in there and just hopefully make some like big play and put it on Reddit or something. But <laughs> um, you want to like just be kind of calm. You want to wait a second or two, wait for an ability to be blown, wait for someone to make a mistake. Like I said, maybe Graves using his E offensively now he has nothing to escape you with, and then go in and you know kind of punish them for their mistakes. You make a great um, point there when you say that uh, people need to be more patient. We actually preach that a lot on this podcast is that uh, a lot of times in team fights, if you just wait that extra second to do something or you wait an extra half a second, an opportunity yeah. may open for you. And, yeah. uh, you know, the, the t hearing somebody touch on that it plays Zed or plays an assassin, I think will do a lot for people out there that it, just have patience in a team fight. It's not all about, it's not all about balls to the wall, right? You don't need to necessarily force something to make it happen. Not always. I mean, again, it's the thing. I, the reason I don't like talking about this sometimes is because it's just it's so situational. Like it's super situational. Like sometimes, yeah, you, if you're playing Yasuo, let's say, let's say nothing's happening, you're all like kind of dancing between each other. Like your team's here, they're here, but you get like a five man queue knock up, and then okay, yeah, probably you want to engage that, right? You're forcing that to happen, but like that's also situational, right? It just it really depends on what's happening. But like as a general concept, like I said, like you said, you want to be a little patient. You want to wait for that mistake. You want to, because so it's solo queue. People make mistakes all the time. Mm. You want to wait for that mistake, and you want to capitalize off that. As an assassin, especially. Daisy, did you have something to add? Yeah, I was gonna say, with an assassin, do you prefer like pick comps? Do you would you prefer to like kind of urge your team not to five v five and just make picks in the jungle, or does it? Will you pick an assassin into pretty much any comp? That's a pretty good question. That's kind of asking like, oh, do I split push or do I team fight? Um, Pick comps are good, so like maybe having like an Elise jungle or like a Morgana support or like I don't know it, something that can like just from far away get someone like a Thresh or something like that. It's good because assassins work off of that. If anyone gets caught, especially if you're walking in the jungle and someone like on the enemy team, let's say he's walking and he's like trying to ward something up, and then he obviously gets caught. An assassin of all champions can probably kill them really fast, right? That's what their job is. Um, so pick comps are not bad. Sometimes team fighting comps aren't that bad either. So like let's say I. I have a comp that has a Kale and I'm playing Zed. I like that. Or maybe if I'm playing Yasuo or Talon, I, I like that because I can go in, I can be in that fight longer so I can ensure that I kill my target and then I can still probably get out because I still have that Kale ultimate or I'm still con just con going to continue the fight because I'm still at full HP. So, I mean, there's a lot of comps you can build around it. I can, in solo queue, I'll, I'll, I'll probably pick into almost anything unless they have like a ridiculous amount of CC, like a Lissandra, like. Um, I don't know. Lissage is always the first one that comes to mind when we're, we're talking about CC. Sure. Um, well, anybody that has some kind of uh, hard CC, anybody that, yeah. can, that can that will spend it all on you and, and will exactly. wait for you to go exactly. in. Right. Right. So like, uh, cool. let me look at the champion list really quick. I'm like completely forgetting every champion right now. Um, Na well, not Nasus. Like Shen, it could be pretty annoying in all honesty. Um, Thresh could be quite annoying. Uh... A Blitzcrank, if you're playing Katarina, Blitzcrank is a huge counter because his ultimate, you just press R and bam, your ultimate's canceled. Um, so but, but, a sorry. lot of the support, just a lot, probably a lot of the supports, anybody who saves like Alistar, if they save their name, Alistar, for Leona, you, Nami, Leona, absolutely. Lulu. Yeah. Malphite, even. Malphite's just still, they'll, they love ulting assassins and just queuing and just sticking on them. A Renekton's not bad. But well, that's where you bring up your point earlier by being patient and allowing that person to use their CC because somebody else dove into the battle before you did allows exactly. you to win the team fight. So like yeah, so exactly. So speaking of patient, being patient, like a lot of people are, are like, oh, like how do I beat Kale as Zed? Like Kale will she's a hard counter. What do I do? But well, uh, actually, Zed chess on Kale in the laning phase. He destroys her because one, he outranges her and harass, and two, um, Kale's ultimate, for instance, is not the duration of it is always shorter than Zed's ultimate's death mark duration until rank 3. Um, only then are the durations the same. So what you can do with that, and like the mentality you can have in terms of being patient is, if I don't ult her, she won't ult her. So until my ult goes off, she won't use her ult. But if she ults first, then I win, because I'll just ult right after. So you can always have that mentality. You won't ult until I ult, so I'll use that against you, kind of thing. And you can you know, just be patient about that, and you just... Chances are you'll win the fight in terms of auto attacks, or in terms of just regular abilities without any ults. So that's another example of being patient. You know, if you're not gonna, if, if I'm not gonna ult, you're not gonna ult. So we're just both not gonna ult, and we'll just see who can win without ultimates. <laughs> that kind of thing. Well, let's uh, tra let's transition this conversation a little bit away from assassins and more just an overall uh, overall mid lane focus right now. I want to talk about warding and roaming. I think uh, something that a lot of people have problem with when they first pick up mid lane is that they don't understand how to roam or when to roam. 
can we can I have you touch on that a little bit and kind of talk about what you look at for you know what are you doing how are you roaming and, and are you using it to your advantage um, well, the number one thing you want to roam, you want to push in your lane, and then you want to roam, right? You don't want to like have your lane being pushed in, and then you roam, and then like it's like a lose lose. You lose minions, you lose experience, you might lose the tower, you might your gank might not even be successful from your roam. So you always want to make sure you push in the lane as fast as possible, and you roam. Um, it depends what champion you're playing. If you're playing like I don't know something really slow, like a Nivea, let's say like a Nivea is not the best roaming champion because she's very very slow, right? But if you're playing like a Nidalee mid. You know, she can hop over walls, she can get there fast. If you're playing Zedmid, he can go over walls, he can go there fast. If you're playing even a Zerath, who's pretty immobile, but he has his ultimate that's half the map range, you can roam. If you're TF, you can literally just red card the wave, throw the Q, bam, you push it in, bam, pop your ultimate. Um, so that's one, that's one tip. The number two thing is you want to look at um, like what's happening in the other lanes. For instance, like I think TF is one of the best ones for this. Like If um, top lane's getting ganked, then bam, you can you can you have to keep your eyes on the minimap a lot, and then as a mid laner, you can always react to it because you can obviously get to top lane faster than bottom lane can get to top lane, or even sometimes the jungler can get to top lane. So you always want to keep an eye out on that as well. So like if someone's getting ganked, you know you can always just kind of try and walking up there if you can. Um, but the biggest thing by far is having your lane pushed up before you roam, because if you don't do that, you're gonna probably lose a lot more than you gain. Um, and in terms of warding, you mean like where you want to ward or like what exactly are you asking about that? Well, yeah, it, we like to preach a lot of people to not just ward lane bushes, but to ward near wraiths so you can see the jungler ward a little bit down further down the river and really pay, ma you know, obviously map con or map, uh, not control, excuse me. Uh, I can't think of the word off the top of my head, and it's, it's so easy. Awareness? Just, awareness, thank you. Map awareness oh. is something that you really, you, you're you going to need even more as a mid laner than you are in the lane because there's more areas that you can be ganked from as a mid laner. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you know, where are you warding? How are you warding? What are you using? Are you buying pinks? Or are you are you buying sweepers early? You know, kind of give us an overview of how you go about vision as a mid laner. Okay, well, warding is something I'm personally still, still working on myself. I'm pretty greedy when it comes to wards, um, but I'm trying to like ward more often too. It's super important because, like you said, there's literally six paths you can get ganked from, right? There's three on each side. Um, so one really common thing people do in mid lane with the pink is you take the pink and you ward it. You know, like the two brushes that uh, start just as the river starts, like the long one, right? Mm -hmm. You can put it right there, closer to your side, because. Um, a very common place to ward, like period, is in that brush. It's very safe. You can ward over the wall, and it's you know it's a good place to ward. So if you put your pink there, and then the enemy mid laner puts his like let's say regular ward there, um, you can go ahead and probably kill it. And if they try, you know, obviously at that point they'll see that you have a pink ward there. But if they try attacking it, your pink ward it has five auto attacks, right? So by the time they're like trying their best to auto attack it, you can obviously punish them for that. You can throw an ability, you can maybe push in the wave, and you can make them miss something. Whether it's a full wave, whether it's like half their HP or something like that. So that's a really good place to uh, throw down pink wards or just wards in general. Um, another good place is the obviously the tiny brushes that are close to Dragon and Baron. Those are really good too. And the brushes right above or under it. Um, like that one, the kind of like the, the one that used to be like an L shape or like a U shape, sort of um, for dragon, the one that's above it, and for right. um, the one on the other side of red and yeah, red. those ones, the right. ones that kind of go across like a little little wall thing. Uh, but that's also a good place because um, it'll, it it gives you vision of exactly what you want to see. Or like you said, that but those are like a little more safe wards. Again, it can go more offensive, like you said. You can put it closer to the rates. Not only does that give you a vision of the jungler, but that also um, it helps your jungler as well. So you know where the enemy jungler is, while your jungler will know like maybe where that jungler is too, so they can counter gank or counter jungle rather. Small things like that. And the last one I want to say is actually warning it in the lane, which um, kind of close to their tower, but obviously outside of range of the tower. And the reason you want to do that is because, speaking of roaming, if um, the person is a heavy roam champion that can push in the wave really quickly, like maybe a Zerath or TF, and then can just maybe roam or something. Um, that ward will let you see where they roam, right? So it's really nice to have as well. Now, do you spend more time, if you are, we'll talk perfect game, you know, not balanced, where you're able actually able to push in your roam. Are you, are you doing a 50-50 between top and bottom? Are you spending time in the enemy jungle? You know, where are you roaming? How, what are you yeah. looking for when you are roaming? Yeah, that's a good question, yeah. Um, I it's situational too, but usually I would prefer bot lane. The reason I prefer bot lane is because if you get a successful roam, that's two kills, not one, potentially. 
Um, but you, have, you have more potential for gold there, right? You have two champions to kill rather than just one top lane. And top lane usually is some like annoying tanky champion that you'll probably not even kill. <laughs> no um, so bottom lane is more squishy usually. Uh, and the, and the, but the main thing, and the, the main main thing is the fact that if you do get a successful roam slash gang bottom, that opens up dragon, um, which you can easily just kind of transition into with your jungler. So top lane, everyone knows it as the island, and it's you know for a reason, right? You you don't get a whole lot from getting a successful roam or gang top lane. Sure, you can get a tower, but you can get exactly the same thing. You can get top bottom lane and more extra champion, um, you have, like I said, the, the, the dragon, et cetera, et cetera. So if I had to choose, it would be bottom. But if my jungler obviously is in a fight somewhere in my jungle or their jungle, then obviously I would you know, go there instead of bottom. Again, situational, but in a general kind of principle, I would choose bottom lane. Sure. Yeah, you, and obviously, excuse me, <clears throat> with a podcast, we have to talk generalities. We can't, you know, bring out certain scenarios because how yeah. often does, does one scenario happen? Uh, I think... I'll, you know, I I had asked the question, you know, who's mid laner, and I really wanted to talk to you because I was I'm I'm slowly trying to learn mid lane. I'm a top lane main going to mid lane, so I really you know this this information is quite helpful. Um, coming from somebody who plays mid lane all the time to somebody who's brand new at playing mid lane, but is experienced enough in the game to understand the champions, where should I start? Or if anybody, bronze, silver, plat, whatever, where does they start? What champions should they look at? How should they play the game? Not thinking about personal preference to to what I would play. Okay, well, see, I was going to actually say that. <laughs> it's all about personal preference. Okay. Um, like, does, does your top five assassin list cater to the new player, or does that cater to the seasoned mid lane player? Probably the second one, because assassins in general aren't easy champions. They're very, um, they're very, like you said, squishy champions, right? If you mess up, you're going to mess up big, and you're not going to be bringing really anything to the fight. So I'd probably recommend picking up safer champions. Like, um, my opinion, like, probably the safest and, like, just overall, just the best well-rounded champions right now in mid lane. Um, go for maybe Ari. She's super safe. Not many counter picks. Um, she brings a lot of pick potential. She has escapes with her ultimate. She has sustain with her passive. She has poke and shoot damage with her Q. Her W is very strong. It's actually getting nerfed next patch. Um, to Zerath, who is like super long range. She has passive sustain uh, from his first mana, so he can push in the waves pretty easily. He can do it from afar. He has great poke. He has cash potential. He has a lot of AoE. And it's just, you know, getting caught as those champions and messing up as those champions is a lot harder than messing up as like a Katarina or like a Zed or like a Yasuo. So if I were to recommend like a pool of champions, it would be like safe kind of long range AP mid laners, like a Velkos maybe too. But the only problem with Velkos is that, like Zerath, they are both uh, purely skill shot oriented. So that's the only bad part about them. But Zerath is a bit more forgiving because he has his cooldowns are a bit uh, smaller. And then you know if you miss too many skill shots and you waste too much mana, well you have your passive. You just auto attack a champion or minion and right. you have your mana back. So I would probably choose Zerath as like the safest like the kind of go-to champion right now. Um, if I look at the list, I can probably bring up some more. Um, pretty much like TLDR, Vagar, no, no assassins. Like too, that, too bad of an idea to start with either. Vagar, I wouldn't say play Vagar. Uh, the reason I don't want to say Vagar is because, first of all, his stun is awkward to use if you're not used to it. You will miss a lot of them probably. Um, his combo, if you're not used to it, is also it's harder than it looks in all honesty. Um, and his laning phase isn't the best. He's very punchable because mm -hmm. he has no escapes. The jungler can camp you, and you know it's he he's not someone that he's a lot harder than he looks. Let's just put it that way. While Zerath is a lot more long range, he's a lot more safer. He can do a lot more things. Like Lissandra, for instance, I actually made a video talking about how I think Lissandra probably one of the best solo champions right now because she offers like a ridiculous amount of CC. And the great thing about Lissandra, especially if you're a new mid laner, is you're not forced to win lane. Like when you play LeBlanc, when you play like any assassin, when you play like, I don't know, a lot of champions like those, like like LeBlanc, I'll just use her as an example. Like you're forced to win lane. If you don't win lane, you're gonna fall off. You're gonna be useless. You're not gonna offer that much. But Lissandra, you can lose lane, but you're still offering everything you want to. Sure, the damage might not be like anything spectacular, but like if anyone in the enemy team is fed, or if anyone needs to be kind of, you know, kind of, I guess put a leash on them or something. Uh, Lissandra is the one that's going to do that. No matter if you're zero six or six zero, oh, you're still going to be able to do that. You're still going to be able to e in ult whoever you want. Have your team focus them down. Hopefully, he'll focus them down and um, w them all. You know, and just offer a whole lot to the team. So that's another, I think, a really good pickup. What about, um, what about Annie in the mid lane right now? I'm actually seeing a huge resurgence in her, and I'm wondering how she would fit into the meta and 
and on on the topic we're on, how she would fill in for a new a new uh, mid laner. Anis, I hate Anis. I I have no. I'm sorry. I have no respect for any players. <laughs> um, Damn it! We'll never get along, Red. <laughs> I, I just I don't. I have no respect for any players. She's so strong for how easy she. Is. That's not, that's. I'm glad you brought it up though. Anis definitely a. She's like the ash of mid lane in my opinion. From before, like you know, just a super sure. easy champion. You just don't have to really know a whole lot. You just throw abilities, and chances are you will kill them. And no, <laughs> that's a good that's a good mention though. And he's definitely another champion you can look at. Not hard to play whatsoever. You can definitely do a lot of things, especially now that she got. I can't believe she got buffed. I don't know, man. I was, so, I was so salty about that. I don't know. <laughs> you still sound salty. I don't know. About, I'm still pretty about salty. <laughs> I don't think she needs buffs whatsoever. But whatever. Anyway, that's a good champion though. I agree. That's that's a really good champion to pick up. Like, well, she has her skill shots aren't really skill shots, right? They're not like a Zerath kind of e. Sorry. They're instant cast on their AoE. Exactly, they're instant cast and their cones are AoE, right? While Zerath is like a pure skill shot, it's like a really skinny line. So, that's a really good champion. I, yeah, that's, I'm glad you brought that up, actually. But, stay away from like champions like Azir or like a Cassiopeia. Um, those are super, 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 super hard to play. And I don't recommend playing that if you are a new mid laner. Unless you have like some crazy mechanics. Um, another champion also, I just looked at him. Uh, Lulu's actually not bad. You don't really see her much anymore because there's just better options. Lulu's not bad though. She's she's somewhat easy and she can offer a lot to the team. Um, where's this one champion I was just looking at? That was a really good mid laner that I feel like is pretty. Uh, Oriana, that's the one. Oriana, not that hard to play. Not super difficult. The only hard part about her is maintaining your ball, like keeping your eye on it. Sometimes you know you can lose track of it. So that's other than that. Is, sorry. <laughs> so you don't sombrero yourself. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be awkward. <laughs> but well, pretty speaking, strong champion. Speaking, so we've, we've pretty much you primarily touched on just uh, uh, safe mages. How do you feel about? Uh, I won't call them cheese picks, but they more or less are cheese picks from mid lane. We'll talk Jarvan. We'll talk. Uh, you know, Jarvan. Obviously, Keen does Hecarim, which I think is super cheese. Uh, very cheese, yeah. But you've got you know you've got Jarvan, you got Tristana, you've got the other champions like that in the mid lane that are AD based. Uh, I don't know how much of those you play. Rumble kind of sees a little bit of play, not as much in there. But how do you feel about some of those champions? Pantheon is another one, a really good one. Jarvan and Pantheon are actually really good ones to bring up. How do you feel about those champions in mid lane for players who are learning mid lane or even seasoned veterans of the of the game? Well, actually, I actually made a top five cheese in this video. <laughs> oh, did you? I missed that one. So let me go ahead and I remember myself what I put. Let me just look at it. So number five, I actually put Master Yi for mid lane. Okay. Um, I it, it, it can definitely work. Um, because he obviously you know, AP Master Yi rip right. That's no no longer a thing. Um, <laughs> I don't miss him. Oh, I don't miss, you know, miss him either. Yeah, it was pretty obnoxious, I must say. But like, it's not that bad because if you play correctly, you have you have decent wave clear with this Q. You have decent harass with this Q. You have sustain with your W, which you, even if you're Calcep, you know you know how to use it pretty well. You can all tech reset with it. Um, and if you're really good with Master Yi, what you can do is much like um, much like a Diana sorta. Every time you have your passive, you know the the double strike thing, you can just Q on the champion, proc your E, bam bam, and then that's a lot of damage. And you can do that level two. So that's the cool thing about it, right? So it's very cheese. Um, number four, I have Riven, um, mm -hmm. probably one of the most popular cheese champions mid lane in my opinion, but very difficult to play. I, I hope no one's saying she's easy to play because <laughs> trust me, on this podcast, nobody here is ever going to say that that Riven yeah. is easy to play. Definitely a hard champion. Like I was actually watching this one streamer. I don't know if you guys know him, C9 Yasui. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him. Kind of a small streamer, but I've heard of Yasui. Yeah, Yasui. He's a pretty good player, and he actually plays Riven a lot mid. And someone actually asked him about Riven, and I remember he answered it in a way that I actually agree 100%. It's, he said something like, she's not easy to play, she requires a lot of finesse. Mm -hmm. right? and I, I think that's like the perfect word. She requires so much finesse because you have so many things to dodge, you have to play perfectly. Um, you can't overextend, if you overextend you're dead. And overall Riven, uh, probably one of the more popular cheese, uh, cheese mids. Um, number three, I put Pantheon, like you said. Pantheon super strong, stole balls like a monster. Like if he gets going, he's gonna get going hardcore. Um, and his Q harass in any phase, especially if you start bottle, it pew 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 right just every like two seconds. <laughs> really strong. Um, number two, I put Wukong. Okay. That was kind of a secret pick I had. Um, it's pretty good because he has his E gives him a, uh, attack speed and his Q goes through armor, and his Q has extra range on uh, on the ability versus his auto attack. So what you can obviously do is you can E auto attack Q. 
And obviously, you know, when you use your E, they'll be running away. But since your Q has that extra range, chances are you'll still hit him. Um, he has really good, you know, juke potential and his capability with his W, and probably one of the most useful ultimates in League of Legends. Um, a lot of damage coming out from him. Definitely underrated, in my opinion, for mid lane. And number one, I put Jace. Um, okay. I'm actually surprised you didn't pick up Jarvan there at all in that. Jarvan was definitely I, I was he, thinking of Jarvan. He, he's kind of like, oh, I can you know, I, I don't I don't disagree with your list. I think your list is great. Uh, he Jarvan kind of like puts me at that like I'd put him at number 2, but he, I could see him 6 or 5, like one of those. He could he can move in and out very easily. No. I agree 100%. The thing is I made this list before Jarvan like became really popular. Sure. Uh, I know Jarvan is super popular right now. He's like picked like in the jungle as much as possible almost. Like I understand. Like, if I were to make this list now, I'd probably put Jarvan somewhere in there. Sure. Um, but this was before Jarvan. How old was, was this like, list when did you when did you uh, This post was this? on November 2nd. Okay. So like yeah, like almost 3 months ago. Right, right. Um no, Jarvan, I think Jarvan can really work. Like he's actually, yeah, he's super strong. Like, he, like I don't know where his damage is coming from. Probably his passive. It, it's passive. Yeah, it's, it's his passive. It's his, <laughs> it's his passive and the extra, the extra armor shred he gets off of his Q. If you can pull that EQ combo off between the passive and the auto attack, you're doing oh, a ton of damage. Thing. Especially if you have a Hydra. Yeah. yeah. Plus those free, free stats from his E. It's it, that champion's amazing. No, I agree. If I were to make it, Jarvan will be up there for sure. Um, he's super strong. I don't know. I don't know what to say. He's just he's strong. He's if he gets ahead, I've seen Jarvan's do like an obscene amount of damage and like zero oh, between, time. Between you can easily passive you, R, it's done. Yeah, you can easily execute somebody with a quarter health. With Especially if you go full AD, Jarvan. Yeah. Like, yeah. You will. Yeah. No, I agree. Jarvan is. Yeah, he's he's strong. Man, he's super strong. Especially in the mid lane because he can gap close. Like the thing about she's mids that I. Um, that you notice almost in every single one I picked here is all of them have some sort of gap closing ability. The Mass G with his Q, Riven, right. Riven is Riven. Um, you have a lot of gap closing potential. You have Pantheon with his Q, Harass with his stun, which is the gap close. You have Wukong, of course, with his E, and then you have Jace with his Q and Hammer form. They all have a gap close. Without a gap close, you're not much of a cheese because you can't really abuse them as hard. There's never that fear of, oh, he can jump at me at any time and just kind of give me in like I guess one second. that's what, why Yasuo it would be number one assassin right now, because he can just dash to the minions, dodge all skill shots, and, and trade. Well, yeah. Yeah, I get, yeah and that is why I put him number one right now, mainly because a, a lot of other assassins got nerfed. Um, but that's also why, yeah, that's why Yasuo up have number one. That's why Zed's really popular, because he has that really infamous gap closing potential with his W and his ultimate. Um, Katarina, of course, a lot of gap closing. So if you're playing cheese mids, chances are you want to have someone that has gap closing a, a potential. That's why Hecarim is really good too, because his ultimate, bam, instant gap close. But the main reason is because his Q is apt. <laughs> it's so obnoxious, like, especially if you have a Triforce, a lot of damage. But then you have his dashing, like his little like running thing, which has, I, I must say, that does a lot more damage than you would think. It does <laughs> so much damage, which is why Keen does so well with it. Like it, it's. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. How would you, in general, how would you play against a cheese mid? And maybe this is impossible to answer because they're all so different. But you you touched on that they all have gap closers and they're all looking to pretty much all in you. So is there, are there like specific picks that you would pick yeah. against a cheese mid and safe a picks. strategy that you would go into? That yeah, you would want them. safe picks. You want to, that's, that's where like champions like Azeroth comes in or maybe even Ari. Champions that can harass from afar. And like the one thing you want to deny these champions, like, okay, what do all these champions have in common, right? All of them have in common that they snowball quite well. So all you want to do is try to prevent them from snowballing. You want to play something safe, something that you don't have to really fight them. You, you, like, you want to avoid fighting them in the laning phase. That's the whole thing, right? You want to make sure you don't get into a fight and you can just kind of see us from afar, like, which is why I think Azeroth is just really good because he can just keep queuing from afar he has great sustain on his mana so he can chances are just stay in the laning phase uh, you know a decent amount of time um so that's probably the number one thing you want to make sure you just avoid fights as long as possible until team fights start and then that person since they didn't get really fed or they don't really snowball off of you um they're not as effective as they probably should be well uh to to start to move this toward a close, I have a, uh, I re, I only have one more question for you, and then I kind of leave it open for anybody else to ask. Uh, my question being, in in a general sense, how do you view boots on a mid laner? How are you prioritizing the things? We actually had a question if you would rush an early home guard if your mid turret is being you know sieged heavily. Uh, You'll you, see top laners do that sometimes. 
is is rushing early home guard so they can they right. can save a turret. Do you do you put stock in mobility as a mid laner? Do you run a lot of move speed quints? Do you buy boots earlier than you would expect? You know, the... it depends who I'm playing. Uh, if I'm playing Katarina, I'll buy boots a lot sooner because I want to roam with Katarina. Um, I usually only buy boots on champions that I'm either going to roam a lot with or are vulnerable. Like a really good example of this actually is Twisted Fate. He's I think the only mid laner that I run uh, that I play that I run move speed quints on. The reason is because he's a, he's a very fragile mage, right? He's very, like, like, if he gets hit by something hard, he's going to get hit by it very, very hard. Um, so you want to make sure you're dodging left and right and avoiding as much as possible. Um, so the only time I would prioritize it, again, is if I'm roaming a lot, so like Katarina, or if the mid laner is somewhat of a close-range mid laner, like a TF, that needs to make sure that he can dodge abilities against, like, a Zerath or something. And he's, you know, he needs to, like, sidestep a lot. Um, other than that, like if I'm playing a Zerath or something, if I'm playing like an Assassin, so for people like Zerath, like the long range kind of more safe uh, uh, mages, I would not get boots too soon because they don't really benefit as much from it. Because they're, I mean, they have long range, right? You don't really care about too much of a move speed. Chances are you'll be in range to use a lot of your abilities if you're positioning yourself somewhat correctly. Um, so he doesn't, he's not really dependent on mobility um, or Assassins. It depends on how ahead you are on gold for me. If I'm like snowballing really hard, I'd rather get my big items first before I get boots, so that in the laning phase, assuming it's still the laning phase, I can uh, just punish my target that much more, and I'll kind of hold off on the boots as long as possible at that stage if I'm not gonna roam. Um, but if I'm kind of if I'm doing okay and you know I feel like yeah you know I'm kind of even in the laning phase, I'm not really winning, but I'm not really losing, and you know maybe bottom is looking kind of juicy, then yeah I'd probably get boots a lot sooner than normal. It all really depends on what kind of mindset are you going for. Are you going for just like, not who cares about all the other lanes? I'm just going to dumpster my lane as hard as possible, avoid the boots, just go for the damage items first. Um, but if you're thinking of yeah, you know, I need to be a little more careful here, I need to avoid ganks, I need to dodge skill shots, or I'm going to roam, then you want to get boots a bit sooner. That's why I look at it. Okay. Uh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this open for these guys to. I have I have one more question for you. I want to make sure everybody gets gets their their points in here. I have a mid laner friend who had a question on runes, uh, back on the topic of mid lane casters. And he's saying that he sees a lot of pro players uh, pick AP per level blue runes. Mm -hmm. But whenever he tries that, he kind of gets rocked. If, if, he, if he substitutes magic resistance runes for those. Um, so he's kind, of, he's kind of stuck in between the two. Does, should, he, should he be playing the magic resistance? Should he be playing the AP per level and the scaling? Do you have a, do you have a preference on what your caster runes would be? And, are, are they dependent on play style or just champions? Uh, I feel like it's both. Um, like I have several pages. I have some pages that have the uh, MR, or rather the uh, AP per level blues. I have some pages that don't. I usually actually run the pages that do have the MR, the flat MR. Um, overall, it depends, first of all, how aggressive are you. If you're super aggressive and you're laying against uh, another AP mid laner, of course, then you want to have the prop you probably want to have those runes. But if you're playing something that's passive, that's like kind of waiting more for the mid to late game, then you can probably skip out on those runes and get the um, AP per level. And because by the time you know the fights actually start, and by the time like you're actually going to start going, I guess aggressive, that's when those runes will start start kicking in. So if you're playing it, if you're willing to play it safe, like for instance, I'm Organa, I would say I'm Organa, you know, very safe, very passive. You're not going to fight. You're going to avoid fights. You're just going to throw your pool and just go AFK for a bit. Um, <laughs> she can probably get away with getting uh, blues that have uh, AP per level because she's not going to fight often, and it's hard to gank her because of Black Shield. Um, but if you're playing something like a LeBlanc, then maybe you want to get the MR uh, MR blues because you know you're going to be fighting a lot. You're going to be going for the kills. You're going to be aggressive, and you want to make sure that you can. Um, tank the damage, and if you go AP or if you go uh, AP per level blues, then that's not really going to kick in until it's kind of already too late. Not too late, but before it really matters. So it really depends on how you, what you're looking for. Are you looking for like early game bulliness, or are you looking for just yeah, I'm gonna kind of chill back a bit, wait till like level nine, and then I'll you know once team fights start or something, then I'll just I'll, I'm gonna show my power kind of thing. That's how I look at it. You also you also answered the question about why pros you always see pros go AP per level too because you never see a mid lane or um, you'll never see in a solo lane one person really stomp the other. Usually it's very even and there's a lot well, of respect sometimes. given to both sides, so they have time to uh, get the most out of those scaling runes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, again, unless it's like Bjergsen versus Bobelta or something, two super aggressive <laughs> players, then probably things are going to go down. In the mid lane, but if it's something really passive, then 
yeah, chances are they'll just be kind of chilling, just farming up, and letting those runes sort of kick in mid-game. So, again, it, it all depends on what you're looking for. What are you trying to accomplish? Well, I'm going to close out this cast with one last question for you, and that's about Scion, because DeClaude, who is a person that who should have been on the podcast, another member of this podcast, uh, had told us that you really, really like Scion right now, not in the mid lane, <laughs> but just as general as a champion. Uh, can you tell us why you like him, and, and you know, what do you think so powerful about the champion? <laughs> That's kind of I don't know. <laughs> all right. Um, so obviously, when I go in solo queue, I'm always like, oh yeah, I want to play mid, please. But you know, that doesn't always happen. So sometimes I'm forced to play top lane. And like, I don't really like playing top lane because there's so many champions top lane where, okay, let's say they pick a Riven or a Darius or like Nar or something like that, and I'm just sitting here going, shit, like I have no idea what to pick into that. Like, well, I don't know what counters that. I have no idea what beats it. That's why I don't play top lane. But eventually, like, I've, I've been facing a lot of top Scions, and they just go pure tank, and I'm just like, this is the most, like, dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life, right? Because his E has an obscene amount of base damage, especially if you use a minion to go to hit him <laughs> with. And, like, you just, you can't kill him, and he's just kind of chilling, just, just dancing in front of you, and you just, you can't do anything. So I'm like, all right, you know, if you can't beat him, join him. So I started playing that. Like, the first game I ever played, like, no, not the first game. I played him once when he got reworked way back. But the first like actual serious game I played with him, like I don't know, like five days ago, I actually was making Twitter posts about it, saying he's like my new main now. I just bought him top lane. I'm just like building pure tank, just building only only defense. That's it. No offense. Absolutely no offense. Spamming my E in the lane phase, just farming up, and then team fights. I'm literally just at the back line, just annoying the shit out of them. <laughs> they can't do anything about it. And I don't. Know, it was it was like too easy almost. Like it's. He's obscenely strong. Like he's so tanky. He's so hard to kill. His W is a decent amount of damage because it scales off a percentage HP, like your max HP. Um, his ultimate, a huge disruptor. His Q, which you follow up after the ultimate, more disruption, especially if you charge it for more than half the duration. His E has a ridiculous amount of damage, and you know you, you probably have Sunfire ticking around, uh, ticking away in there. You have like a Frozen Heart just annoying them as well. Maybe a Randuins or whatever, whatever. And I don't know. I just started playing him top lane, and I'm just like, yeah, they can't kill me. I'm just like annoying their backline, their Cassiopeia and their graves are like busy whacking away at me. I'm just like spamming dance or like spamming taunt and they can't do anything. And while well, my backline is just you know, having their way with their front line, that's like half as tanky as I am. And I don't know. It's just, he's so strong. He's just, he's really strong. Super easy to play too. Yeah. Very easy to play that Ian Lane. <clears throat> Not Pe hard people all, disrespect no. him in lane. Like I I'll give it to to Claude and I. We always we right now if he was on the podcast we'd be yelling at each other about the champion because yeah. we have conflicting views. But I d understand his power in his laning phase. It is very very very. Powerful. He has nothing to worry about in the laning phase. He's really really safe and the da like the damage poke for me is yeah. significant enough to not really worry about anything. And you're probably not gonna die from a gank because. You're tanky you're as it away. is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or you have W to save you for that yeah, extra damage you had taken. But um, I think I think that's it. Uh, do you cheer out days? Do you have anything else to add to, to any, this piece of conversation? Okay. Um, Red, I appreciate you being on. Why don't you tell people where they can find you on your Twitch? Give them again your YouTube. Give them a little bit of feel about you so people know you know where to find yeah, you. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, YouTube is Red Mercy. Tw uh, Twitter, I think, is Red Mercy. Facebook should be Red Mercy or Red Mercy LOL. Twitch is Red Mercy LOL. Twitter is Red Mercy, LOL. Um, Twitter is Red Mercy, LOL. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> Wait, you can just <laughs> Google like Twitter Red Mercy, Twitch Red Mercy, and you know, it'll probably come up. But yeah, that's my main, my main thing right there, I guess. Beautiful. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Uh, yeah, we thanks, really appreciate it. Uh, hope, hopefully everybody who's listening out there learned a lot about mid lane and learned about how to play a little more where you can go. And of course, you can go find uh, Red Mercy. You release a video, what, every couple days, once a week, whatever it may be. Four times a week, yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah. You, you you release more more videos than I than uh, most people do that I, on YouTube. I think most people are like once a week. Eh, depends on your uh, content, I guess. Really. Sure, but you know, then it, uh, thanks again for coming on, and uh, I hope everybody yeah, we really appreciate it. Thank All right, guys. So much. That was episode two two thirty two of the Trinity Force podcast. Uh, we will see you for episode two thirty three on Monday. Everybody have a good night. Peace. See you guys. See ya. Peace. Peace.